Hey guys, welcome to the shop. There's no doubt that I've committed myself to a ton of work on this old Chevy pickup truck, and I keep telling myself it'll be worth it. Hopefully I'm correct. Let's start by stripping out the interior on this thing. We did a little work last week, but not enough to mount anything, so I'm gonna try to make some headway this week. We'll start on the inside, formerly known as the, uh, the Mouse Hotel. Many generations have been raised in this thing, so let's get rid of all that mess, and then we'll start cutting on her. Who knows what's under the seat of this thing. An ink pen. And an ice scraper. Look at that. There was one in the truck. So we're using a set of side cutters to remove the sweet sound system from this thing. Actually, it doesn't even have a radio in it. But it did have a set of these Pioneer speakers. Just laying behind the seat. So I've got the seat loose in this thing, and I'm about to reveal what's underneath of it. Are you ready to see? Sick. Looks like a mouse's toilet. It's gross. So it looks like we've got a colony of ants calling my truck floorboard home. It's not good. So I'm going to be pulling the carpet out of this thing. For one, it's horribly nasty, and I'll probably end up just putting a plastic mat in here. Uh, for two, yeah, I'm going to be working on this truck and I, on the <laughs> rockers and stuff, and I don't want it in my way. And for three, chances are I'll catch it on fire if I don't, because I'm going to be welding on this truck. And if I had a dollar for every time I've caught a truck on fire, I'd have several dollars. Mm, the floor on this side is worse than the floor on this side. So this thing is full of broken glass. My guess is somebody broke in here to steal the sweet sound system and then found out that it didn't have one. Huh, there's a big dent in the floor where the drive shaft's broken and come up and hit the bottom of the cab. I bet that woke whoever was in here up. So 34 degrees outside of the shop this morning. Kind of cool, but not, not too bad. 53 on the inside of the shop, so it's comfortable in here with long sleeves. 91% uh, humidity on the outside and 39 inside, so that's pretty good. It is a nice morning. Sun has just now come up. Over the hillside, that is. So you may remember me saying that the floors in these often rotted from the inside down. <laughs> This passenger floorboard is a lot worse than I thought, although I did know that it had a rust hole over here and over there. I didn't expect it to be completely rusty. Luckily, the floors on these are not hard. They're not hard to replace. My investigation tool. So there you go, that's 35 years of rust and uh, corrosion from this thing leaking. Because if you look under this, it doesn't look too bad. It's not that rusty underneath. They leaked bad and rusted from the top. You know, this is pretty common. So, now I'm not too concerned about this, although it looks horrible. Floors in these are easy to do, and no one sees them. This is bodywork that no one sees. This truck is not going to go to a car show without having mirrors underneath of it. We're going to patch this in, cut it up, cut all the rust out, patch in a new piece of metal. There you go. We're done. So not too big a deal. At least it's not way up in the cab. So I'm going to mark this floor where I need to cut it out, which is basically the whole floor. Um, 
my plan was to patch a couple holes in this, but it's uh, escalated past that, which is no real surprise, I don't guess. So we're just going to mark out where, I, where the good metal is and just cut that out and, you know, form in a new piece. That's all we can do, which will work just fine. Better check and make sure my fire extinguisher is around. So now that I got the floor cut all the way around, pretty much a couple stragglers there that'll have to pop loose, but the majority of it's cut free. Now I gotta crawl up under here with the old air hammer and bust the welds loose that hold the floor to the actual cab support here. You'll see it once I get it all off. Ooh. So there it is. Got a little rust on it, but it's not too bad. We'll buzz that off there. Hold your ears. Okay, let's see if we can get it a little better from the top. So there's the floor successfully out. Didn't look too bad from the bottom, but from the top, pretty rusty. So I have seriously lost my half inch ratchet wrench. Where in the world did that thing go? Probably fell down in one of these rust holes. Found it right in front of my face the whole time, sitting on the workbench. I walked past it probably seven times. So overnight my truck decided to start leaking antifreeze. So it's marking its territory in here for a while, I guess. Or maybe it's just scared. Scared that it'll never go back together. Don't worry, truck. I'm a bit afraid myself. One of seven of the wheel well bolts actually come out. So I've worked 
worked at a couple body shops in my life and I always hated pulling off Chevrolet fenders, especially on the, on the trucks. Man, they're on there. So check out that awesome Klein Tools thick foam knee mat that was sent to me by Carlos Atkins. Very nice. So thank you, Carlos. I appreciate that. My bed side or the bottom bed corner here is pushed in a bit. It does not quite line up with the cab corner, especially down at the bottom. And there's a bend seam right here that has, uh, I think they ran over something and kind of pushed this bed side up. So I'm going to try to see if I can't pull that out a bit. Maybe I can, maybe I can't. Nope. Not like that. So I'm starting to get all the rust cut out. I, I'm leaving this rocker in right now because I want this seam here as my reference when I bend my new patch panel for the floor here. I like to keep some references in. That way everything is where it's supposed to be you know, in the end. Even though this is going to get cut out, I'm leaving it for now to work off of.
It looks like you got it. I mean, you know, we're not trying to make a watertight vessel here. So just run up that seam and finish it out. Hi, Boo Boo. What are you doing? Oh, goodness. What are you doing, Bobby? Hmm? Itsy's so good. <laughs> Itsy, Itsy's so good. Itsy's a good dog. Look how good she is, Bubba. She's like, stop petting her. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh God. It's a dog fight. It should be plenty hot. Let me let Bob in. He's freaking out. Yeah, you can do it like that. You can lay it in the seam and then run over top of it. Come on, Bobby. I'm not just going to let you in and then let you right back out. That's not happening. Did he want in? He wanted in, then he turned and wanted right he back out. He wants out. Yeah, he wants it to go out and play with him. Yeah, so just uh, try. I mean, uh, start to, you know, you'll wanna, you don't want to start in the middle of your rod, obviously. You start down here and, and just tap. Yep, just, uh, <laughs> that's hard to explain. Just try it. Itsy and Bobby are running around like crazy. So if I push it hard, it's Yeah. Yep, if you push that button, and it will start the arc uh, when it's close enough to get a connection. So you want to be just really close with the tungsten, with the torch, really close, but not touching. Oh, look at that. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. I can't think. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's flat, definitely, no, oh, it's fine. It's definitely stuck together. So, uh, yeah, keep going with that. Can you see or no? Yeah. So there's my patch panel. Took me about an hour to make it. A little bit complex, but not too bad. Maybe an hour and a half, actually. Fits pretty good, I think. As good as you could expect one to. Now I'll just finish cutting out the rust here, because I don't want to leave any, any rust underneath of these panels where they mate together, because then they'll just keep progressing and cause me problems. So I'm just going to cut out that section there, because it's pretty crusty. All the rest of this is pretty good. So we got a new welder in the shop. This is a Weld Pro 210 LCD. It was sent to me by the exact same people who sent me the other TIG machine that you've been seeing me use. And I think it's perfect for what we're gonna be doing here because it's just easier and faster to MIG weld these panels in because the gaps are not perfect. Right, if we were on a bench on all fixtured, we could TIG them in. And I have TIG welded panels in before on cars that were gonna be seen. But seeing as this is not that truck, 
we're going to be using the MIG machine because it's faster. Now, I can't say whether this is a great machine or not, so just so you know, that's what we're using. And in the future, we'll do a little more thorough review on it. But so far, so good. I've welded with it. My wife's welded with it. And my son has practiced quite a bit with it. So we'll see. In the future, I'll show you this thing. But that's what we're going to be using so you know to weld in these patch panels. Looks pretty good. I'll probably zap that uh, all the way around and call that good. And I'll clean it up underneath and probably do the same thing. Now I did it. You did. It's an excellent job. A tack welding professional. So here's a good example of just using you know, what you have to make it work. This is a steel, it's a mill ball actually, just a hardened steel ball. And what I'm doing is I'm using this as a hammer to stretch out my corners because this is the second piece of my floor because I didn't have a big enough piece of sheet metal to make it all in one piece. But that's not a bad thing. It actually makes it easier for me to do one side than you know, do the other side and makes everything line up better for me. So I stretched the metal out here to give it a kind of a dished in this back corner. That's just the way the floor is. And now I got to do it up here. And I'm making do with what I have because a lot of times that's just what you got to do. A real body guy would have the uh, plastic hammer where that looks like a uh, ice cream cone kind of. You get the idea. I don't have one. And he would have a nice sandbag where I'm using a soft topped stool. Works just slow. So there we go, kind of roughly fitted. I tack welded this back piece in just to hold it in the position that I want it in, and I'll cut that back out. I'm just setting my metal in here, making sure that everything's going to work out the way that I, that I think that it should, and marking where I need to cut off any excess. Now, I could have bought this floor pan. I think they're like $55 or something like that from Summit, and then, you know, a little extra on shipping, and you got to wait a week. Yeah, you know, could have bought this and it would have saved me some work, but it also would have took another week. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have got to show making a panel. Even though this is relatively simple, you know, I still want to put, put the idea out there that you don't have to be able to buy patch panels for the vehicle in order to repair it. 
because I did get some comments in my last week's video where I showed the repair panels that I had bought and a couple people said, you know, good luck trying to get patch panels for this truck or that truck. You know, and yeah, for some models, it's it's really hard to get replacement panels if they're even available at all. Sometimes you got to go find a good donor vehicle and cut it out of that. But, you know, sometimes that's even impossible to find. So you just make them as best as you can. And a lot of times for floors, you know, it doesn't really matter. When you get into more complex shapes, you know, you could invest a lot of time in it. But it can be done. You know, nothing's impossible, obviously. So, well... Some things may be impossible, but making body panels isn't. So there you go. You, know, you just make them as best you can. So I've had this set of polyurethane cab mounts forever. Well, so I've had this new set of polyurethane cab mounts for probably seven years and hadn't put them on. So I guess it's time, especially why it's this easy to get to. up a new some new bolts to mount this cab that's pretty uh pretty thin there so those will have to do
So this truck now has a floor. Get out of my way, wires. So this truck now has a floor in this side, and it looks pretty good. For a, for a shop-made floor, it looks real good, and it fits excellent, if I do say so myself. It's not perfect. I had to do a little heating and beating on a few parts, but, you know, who cares? It is a floor. It's in there good and solid. It'll be seam sealed. It'll be painted, just uh, probably a rattle can paint. And then uh, we're not going too far on this truck. And then we'll put some uh, soundproofing material in here, and there you go. You know, you will never see this through the soundproofing material. And if you're ever up under this truck and you notice that it has floors in it, you're never going to be under this truck, so you'll never see that it has floors in it. Or it's had floors put in it. Now it's time to cut out this rocker. We've got to be careful. We don't want to cut out too much. Our patch panel's pretty tall, though, so... <laughs> We're just going to have to go careful, like, and uh, cut away a little at a time. I want to leave what's good intact. So people have a lot of pet names for these wire wheels. The old Retina Eliminator, the old Cheek Poker, that's Derek from Vice Grip Garage. I think I'm going to call him the old Hand Poker. Check that out. Maybe the Knuckle Poker. So I think I've found a pretty good place to stop. I'm keeping this in a rocker because it's really not in bad enough shape to cut out. Because technically it goes back in behind the... Uh, cab mount and stuff and it's just a pain and plus this one's not bad enough to remove my idea here is to make this truck structurally sound keep it dry and keep it off the salty roads and you know prep all the stuff that i can it should last me a long time and you have to find a place to stop otherwise you just keep on and keep on because nothing on this truck is like new and a body man is much like a, a good cat you know you find a place to do your business you do it and then you bury your business with new sheet metal. The thing is that there is a little rust here, but if I keep it dry, keep it off salty roads, this will be structurally sound and last me a lifetime. And that's the idea. So we'll patch it up, call this good, remove this little bit of the rocker that's left, and uh, roll on with it because I've got a lot to do. So I don't know about you, but I think that looks pretty good. Now, it's just vice gripped in at the moment. Um, still haven't had a chance to weld it, but it's not really quite ready. I've got it fit up front. haven't fit it back here yet, but it looks like it's going to work out really well. Got to hang my door, make sure everything's going to line up, and then we'll buzz that in. But not this week, because I'm out of time. You know, this is one week I can actually say I'm happy with the progress that I made. Um, got a floor done, rocker cut out. You know, all cleaned up and going to fit back in. And I say a week, but really it's a day and a half that I get to work on my stuff per video. So keep that in mind. It looks good. I think I made good progress. Hopefully the other side goes as smooth as this side has went. But, you know, we'll see. I know the rocker and the cap corner on the other side are much worse than they were on this side. But the floor looks to be a little better. But I haven't started cutting into it yet. So we'll see, I guess. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and anybody who's helped me out. Much appreciated. It, it makes a huge difference. And a big thanks to the guys who went to my Amazon wish list last week and picked up a few pieces for the old truck. I got some marker lamps for my front fenders. 
I got uh, some headlamp bezels because mine were broke. Got some door seals, which is nice because that'll keep the wind noise to a minimum because it's pretty abrasive riding in this truck down the road uh, with its current sealing issues. And also got a fuel sending unit. So hopefully I'll have a fuel gauge, you know, if it actually works. So that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. to break through